10 worst Formula 1 title defenses. It can't just be me that's a little tired of Max and Red Bull being flipping amazing at defending their titles. I also got tired of Hamilton and Mercedes doing their thing before the current Red Bull period. And yes, I also got tired of Vettel and his Red Bull incarnation defending theirs repeatedly. What's your point old fella may very well be what you're now thinking. Well my point is that we need one of these champions to take a page from the drivers on this list. The 10 worst Formula 1 title defenses, in my opinion, of course, since it's my channel. Villeneuve and Damon Hill spring to mind. Will they make the list? Probably, because they sprang to mind. Disclaimer, as this is a list made by me, a fan. It is very possible that you, a different fan, may have a different opinion. If you do, let me know in the comments. Maybe you have an opinion that changes my opinion. Now with that said, let's go. Number 10. It's Hill, but not Damon. It's Damon's daddy Graham, three-time world champion. The 1968 champion had a torrid time in 1969. The 1969 Formula 1 season of Graham Hill sure wasn't what Brian Adams was singing about. He finished second at Kailami when the SAGP was still a thing. He won for the fifth time at Monaco. And then he broke both his legs in a crash at Watkins Glen in the good old US of A. Probably the man who most resembled a Bond villain before Lawrence Stroll came around scored 19 points and ended a feeble seventh, a good million miles behind eventual champion Jackie Stewart. Number 9. Jody Schechter. It pains me to no end to have the only South African World Drivers Champion on this list. I cannot however argue with these facts. As magnificent as the Ferrari was in 1979, so much did it suck in 1980. The prancing horse became a sobbing donkey in 1980 and Schechter labored to two points in his title defense. Quoting of racefans.net, short on downfalls, lacking reliability and struggling with their Michelin tires. The season was an unmitigated disaster. Defending champion Schechter took a single points finish at Long Beach, soon decided to retire from the sport and in his penultimate appearance, failed to even get the wretched T5 on the starting grid." End quote. 19th place in the World Drivers Championship was the wretched end of the champion's Formula 1 career. In 2024, he remains the only African Formula 1 driver's champion ever. 8th, Mario Andretti. The man Schechter took the title from. Man, things were different back then from the soul-destroying dominance of the current Red Bull and Mercedes periods. Eh? The Lotus 80 promised much. In the wind tunnel and delivered less than Nikita Mazepin on a rainy day. Andretti scored more than half of his points in 79 using the 78 car. By end of the season, they had shelved the new car completely as Andretti struggled to 14 points and 12th in the title race. 7th, Nelson Piquet 1982. Max's main squeeze's daddy is more known down nowadays for his big mouth than his undoubted brilliance as a driver. He won his first title in 1981. Team boss Bernie Eccleston and South African designer Gordon Murray pushed the limits and PK's Brabham was powered by BMW turbo engines for 1982. It sounds promising. The thing was quick, but the thing was brittle. <laughs> PK actually won a race when the car didn't break, but the 20 points he accumulated during the season gave him 11th in the race to defend his title. Now that's more Kvyat than Max on the son-in-law scale. Number 6. Damon Hill 1997. The Englishman finally beat Schumacher in 96 after having his heart and very probably his mind broken by the German in 94-95. See the trouble was though that boss Frank Williams had already decided to replace Hill with Frensen after being smashed by Schumi in 95. Frensen having been Schumacher's earlier teammate that could possibly match him. So the champ was out and he joined Arrows. Yes, they were about as famous back then as they are now. Hill's car broke on the grid on the opening race. The rest of the season went accordingly, until Hungary. In Hungary, Hill was brilliant, and he seemed on his way to an unlikely win, and his car broke down approaching the end of the race. As Wikipedia puts it, 
On lap 74, with three laps left, the hydraulic pump failed on Hill's car, causing it to become stuck in third gear and have an intermittent throttle. As a result, Hill started losing time and was overtaken by Villeneuve partway through the final lap. End quote. I was a Shumi fan and I strongly disliked Hill. Even I felt bad for him in 1997. Hill amassed 7 points during the season and finished 12th in the title battle. Number 5. Alberto Ascari, 1954. Ascari managed 1.14 points in 1954. 1.14. That sounds like a new version of Ascari being dropped on Play Store, but no. That's the amount of points the champ scored. How did he score 0.14 of a point? Well, racefans.net says, Attempting to give a point to the driver who set the fastest lap was thwarted by 1950s lap timing technology. At the 1954 British Grand Prix, seven drivers were credited with a best lap time of 150. The timekeepers being unable to measure their lap time any more accurately. So the single point was shared between Alberto Ascari, Jean Berat, Juan Manuel Fangio, Froilan Gonzalez, Mike Hawthorne, Onofre Marimon, and Sterling Moss. Each got one seventh or 0.14 of a point. End quote. Alscari failed to even appear at a number of races because his Lancia team's car was simply not ready. He raced four times in point scoring rounds because all races did not count towards the title and ended in 25th place in the championship. Fourth, Niki Lauda 1985, another entry that saddens me greatly to talk about. The man is a legend, but after his half a point title win against teammate Prost in 84, he really should have called it quits. As Goodwood.com put it, the celebrations were short lived as his title defense was stymied by 11 retirements and he missed two races after injuring his wrist when his throttle stuck open at Spa. He did pick up one victory at the Dutch Grand Prix, but his season and career ended with something of a whimper, scoring 20 points and finishing 10th in the championship. End quote. Third place, Nelson Piquet, 1988. Three World Drivers' Championship wins, but twice he had a torrid time defending it. Lotus couldn't do with the Honda power, but McLaren, Prost and Senna managed. And poor Piquet faced the McLaren MP4-4 until 2023, the greatest Formula 1 car in history. It won all but one race, and poor Piquet finished six in the title race with a meager 22 points. Second place, might be a bit controversial, Jacques Villeneuve, 1998. Why so high on the list? Because of Williams' absolute dominance before this season. World Drivers' Championship titles in 92, 93, 96 and 97 and serious challenges in 94 and 95 did not prepare us for the rubbishness of the 1998 car. Yes, they lost Renault Power and raced with what Super Techs or what the heck were they called back then, which was basically rebadged old Renaults, but they managed zero wins. The champ scored 21 points to Hakkinen's 100 in a time when only the top six scored points. Villeneuve finished fifth in the Drivers' Championship. Williams have never won another title. Villeneuve never managed to win another Formula One race. He makes it so high on this list because it was such a mighty fall from grace after he won seven times in 1997. Number one, Nico Rosberg. But wait, Rosberg never defended his title. Exactly. Someone had finally beaten Hamilton. Think it was 2021. Think Max had beaten Hamilton. And we were set up for the fight in 22. And then Max retired. That's what Rosberg did. The stage was set for an epic showdown between arguably the GOAT and the only man to beat Schumacher and Hamilton in equal machinery. Fans were salivating at the thought of the battle to come and we were left with Bottas. Bottas. Rubens Barrichello 2.0. I like Bottas. But he's not on Hamilton's level as history has proved. Rosberg gave the non-Hamilton fans hope, and then he took it away and left us with spinning Vettel at Ferrari and Bottas at Mercedes. You broke our hearts, Nico, but we forgive you, because not only did you manage to beat Lewis and Michael in the same cars, you still managed to be extremely unlikable. That's some serious level chadness, my friend. You showed it there. Next level stuff. Some may even say, max level stuff. 
tips. And on that bombshell, it's time to end the show. We end this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you didn't, watch it again. I'm sure you'll grow on your skin or something like a fungus. Anyways, please consider smashing that sub button, sharing the video, and checking out our channel. There is new stuff coming out every week. Thank you for watching. God bless you, and goodbye.